Well, good morning, boys and girls. Good to welcome you back to Children's Church. I can't believe it's another Sunday, and we are here to... Gotcha, James. Ah! <laughs> it's a beautiful day outside, and it's sunny here right now. Hopefully it's sunny where you are, too, where you're listening to this. But, uh, James, you were playing that song, Jesus Loves the Little Children. I don't have a poster for that, but maybe we should sing it. Do you guys know this song? Jesus Loves the Little Children, All the Children of the World. Let's try singing it. What do you think? You guys know it? I know, we're messing up the order. That's okay, everybody stand up. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Great song to start this morning. And uh, actually, it fits with our lesson and everything. Let's see. Rules, rules. I don't want to mess up the order too much. Rule number one, have a happy heart and a good attitude, right? Always have a happy heart. Not just when you're in children's church. You should have a happy heart all the time because Jesus loves us and he is taking care of us. If you're saved, you have plenty of reason to always be happy and always be joyful. Rule number two, Put everything under your chairs, right? And rule number three, say it together. Don't pop anyone's bubble. That's right. Good, good. So you're sitting still. Everything's under your chair. You have a happy heart and a good attitude, and you are ready for what's next? Blessings, right? Blessings. Hey, here's a blessing. How many of you guys are done school? Raise both your hands. <laughs> yeah, everybody. A lot of you. Maybe not everybody, but I'd say most of you, you're done school now. Now, school's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's good to be uh, educated. It's good to learn. God gave us minds and wants us to learn, but it's nice when a certain season is done, right? When you finish the school year, getting ready for another grade, moving up. That's exciting. What a blessing. Keep on learning, even if it's summer, okay? What's the next thing on our list here? Sing! Let's sing! Everybody ready to sing? Are you still standing? Maybe you sat down? Hey, stand back up, and let's sing a couple songs here. I've got uh, I Believe the Bible, Stop, and Let Me Tell You. Remember that one? And then Jesus Bids a Shine. Let's sing these. I Believe the Bible. Everybody standing up? I Believe the Bible. Let's sing it together. I Believe the Bible. I believe the Bible, I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, He's the Son of God. Jesus died for sinners, Jesus died for sinners, Jesus died for sinners, Jesus died for Patrick Benjamin. Jesus Christ is risen, Jesus Christ is risen, Jesus Christ is risen, he arose for Pastor McMenamin. Another, there's another verse, let's sing the last one. Jesus Christ is coming, Jesus Christ is coming, Jesus Christ is coming in the clouds for Pastor McMenamin. Did you add your name in there? How many of you added your name? Raise your hand. All right, a couple of you guys did. That's good, that's good. How about Jesus Bids a Shine? You remember this one? It's probably been a while since we've sung this. I have to see if I can do this, open this up just right. Jesus Bids a Shine. Let's sing it together. Jesus Bids a Shine with a clear, pure light Like a little candle burning in the night in this world of darkness, we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. There's a second verse. Let's sing the second verse together. Jesus bids us shine, first of all for him. Jesus sees and knows it, if our light is dim. He looks down from heaven, sees us shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. 
We all can do our part to point people to Jesus. All of us can do our part, no matter where we are. In your own home, if you have siblings, family members, you can point them to Jesus when you're at school or when you're not in school and you're playing in the yard or playing with your friends. Always point Jesus, people to Jesus. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's sing this one. Do you guys remember this one? Stop. And let me tell you, I got to make sure I get these right. I kind of, they're a little tricky. There's two sides to these, and uh, I could probably use some help up here. Next time, next time. Let's try. Ready? Stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. He forgave my sins and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. Stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Good. I like that song. That was a lot of fun. Hey, you guys know what today is? Today, is, well, it's Sunday. Yes, you're right. It's Sunday. Uh, yes, it is the Lord's Day. Uh, that means we go to church and we worship the Lord today, the first day of the week. It is also June 14th. Sunday, June 14th. And that means it is Flag Day. It's flag. We're right in the middle of of a very patriotic season in our calendar. We had, let's see if I remember correctly, we had Memorial Day, right? And we had uh, D-Day Remembrance. Um, then we have the Armed Forces Day as well. And now Flag Day. Flag Day. Let me ask you a question. What's Flag Day all about? Flags, okay, flags. It is about a specific flag, flag. Which one? Which flag? This one over here or this one over here? That's right, this one over here. I have a miniature flag here. Uh, of course, we have our lovely indoor flag here, um, American flag. I thought I would take a minute to talk about Flag Day in Children's Church today and talk about our flag. Yep, I'm wearing red, white, and blue. Yep, trying to match the flag. I don't have a flag tie, so... Uh, this will have to do, but, uh, do you know what the flag represents in America? Let me talk about, let's talk about flag day a little bit. People all across the United States, hopefully, uh, they celebrate flag day today, June 14th. And they do this every year to honor the United States flag and to commemorate when the United States adopted their flag. Here in Philadelphia, you remember Betsy Ross, the flag that she made and cutting out the stars and, and uh, sewing them onto the canvas there? Uh, you guys should go there if you haven't. There's great history right here in Philadelphia. Um, but on the same day of Flag Day, the United States Army also celebrates his birthday. How about that? Did you know that? There's a little fact for you. The, the American flag is known by a couple nicknames, Old Glory. Um, also the Star Spangled Banner, right? Uh, we call it our American flag. Uh, it's changed designs over the years and the centuries. Um, it has uh, always had 13 stripes, right? Alternating red and white. And then you have the field of blue. The field of blue over here, a rectangle with 50 white five-pointed stars. Can you count all 50? There's 50, do you know what the 50 stars represent? They represent the 50 states, the 50 United States of America. Now, there were not always 50 stars. Actually, early on, there were 13. Now, why 13 stripes? Why 13 original stars? For the 13 original colonies, right? That's right. And so as we remember Flag Day, we don't just remember the 13 colonies and the 50 states now and, and uh, uh, the, the uh, red, white, and blue necessarily, but we remember especially what the flag represents. You know what the American flag represents, has represented historically, and I believe accurately represents? Freedom. In a word, freedom. Uh, it's been an enduring symbol of our country's 
ideals or values, what we really believe ever since the early days. And when Americans see their flag, they ought to remember their loyalty to their nation. They ought to remember to strengthen their beliefs in liberty or freedom and justice and observe the nation's unity. All these stars are in the same blue field. We're all united around this flag, around freedom and justice for all. So today's Flag Day, our project is going to be for you to draw or paint a lovely picture of a flag and post it in your front window. What do you think about that? Or post it somewhere in your house, maybe on the door of your bedroom, on your refrigerator. Um, but I want you to draw or paint or color a beautiful American flag for Flag Day. That'll be your project, and I'll give you a reminder if I remember after or at the end of our, our lesson here today. Hey, should we do the Pledge of Allegiance? Let's do that. Since it's Flag Day, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Do you know all the words? We have a flag over here. I also have a poster. I'm going to go get it. Reflection is too bad. Can you see this? The re there's a little bit of a reflection there. We used to hang this on the wall. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. Can you guys stay with me? Now, if you already seated um, or, or sat yourself down, you need to stand up again. And when we say the pledge of the American flag, we take our right hand and put it over our heart, right? And we stand in attention to the flag. Do you think you need this? I'll hold it here in case you need the words and, and hopefully uh, you can see them. But uh, sorry for the reflection here. You can, you can look outside in the lawn through the reflection. Sorry, distractions. <laughs> All right, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, shall we? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, boys and girls. You can be seated. Very good. Hey, maybe we should sing the national anthem before the end of a class. Do you guys know that? Hey, if you don't, you should. Maybe we'll do that later on, all right? But hey, it's time now for our missionary story. Are you ready? Have a seat and get ready for our missionary story. Mrs. Martin is going to come and share what happens next. Boys and girls, remember, we're talking about the Monroe family. And you know, Mr. Monroe was very patriotic because he wasn't saved yet, but he loved his country and he was in the Navy serving our country and was sent to the Philippines. So remember the map. The Philippines are these islands way over here above Australia. And it looks like it's on the other side of the world. But remember that our world is a globe, not a flat map. And so really this same ocean here is the Pacific Ocean that's the same ocean over on our west coast. So that's where they are. And remember that Mrs. Monroe was very sick, but the Lord spared her life and used a flight surgeon to figure out what her problem was and help her to heal and get better. And because of this happening in her life, she knew that her life had been spared and she really began to seek the Lord. But so far, they did not know the Lord as their Savior. The Monroes returned to America from the Philippines in 1959, and then four years later, Mr. Monroe left the Navy, and they returned to Minnesota. Mr. Monroe worked as an air traffic controller for 31 years including both Navy and civilian control. This is a picture of the airport tower in Minneapolis where he worked. What do air traffic controllers do? They are responsible for the safe and orderly flow of traffic in the air, airplanes. They monitor the position, the speed, the altitude of the aircraft. They use their eyes and radar and then they give directions to the pilots by radio. Controllers have to keep the aircraft a safe distance from each other and move all aircraft safely through their assigned space, as well as when they get to the ground. 
Because controllers have an incredibly huge responsibility and make countless real-time decisions, their job is one of the most mentally challenging careers and can be very stressful. But the Lord was even using that as preparation in Mr. Monroe's life for God's plan. The Monroes, remember, they had a little boy and a little girl, and then they had twin daughters, and then they had one more daughter. So they have one son and five daughters. They did not know the Lord as their Savior yet, but they were trying to raise their children to be good citizens. And in the early 1970s, the Monroes' oldest daughter became very rebellious and caused problems in their family. They didn't know what to do. This made Mr. and Mrs. Monroe realize they needed something, but they didn't know that it was the Lord that they needed. When their daughter was a junior in high school, she worked part-time at a mail order place. And several times when she opened an envelope from someone who was sending in a payment, there would be a gospel tract inside, like the one in this picture. Well, the Lord started working in her heart. After she had read this tract, their daughter was invited to spend the weekend with a friend from school. Her friend took her to a Baptist church in a suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota. When their daughter came back home after being in this church on a Sunday night, she told her parents that she had accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She knew she was a sinner and Jesus had died for her sins. She had gotten saved, and they saw such a change in her. One month later, their daughter led her mom, Sharon, to the Lord. Mrs. Monroe took their girls out of the Methodist church and started attending the Baptist church. They put tracts everywhere for the rest of the family to read, and two months later, on Palm Sunday in 1973, Mr. Monroe received the Lord Jesus as his Savior. Guess who was there rejoicing with the Monroes? Mrs. Weens from Good News Club and Mrs. Donnelly from Bible Time. So following that, the Lord led the Monroes to Central Seminary and Fourth Baptist Church in Minneapolis. And there they received Bible training. Guess who the Monroes met while they were attending seminary? They met our founding pastor, Pastor Hall, who is Pastor McMenamin's grandpa. He started this church. They became good friends. In the following years, all the Monroe children were born again, and through the years, the Lord provided godly Christian mates for all of them. The Monroes were willing to do whatever God wanted them to do. For a while, Mr. Monroe was a calling pastor in Owatonna, Minnesota. Back at Fourth Baptist in Minneapolis, he started a senior adult program. And the Lord also helped them to start three new churches in Minnesota. While they were living in Minnesota in 1991, a pastor friend approached Mr. Monroe with the opportunity to go to India on a short-term trip to teach a Bible college class. Feeling that's what the Lord would have him do, Norm Monroe took his first trip to India January 1st, 1992. For three years, his trips consisted of teaching in the Bible college and building relationships with local pastors and believers. And then in 1995, he began preaching in evangelistic meetings in India, flying to towns and villages throughout the surrounding areas, teaching in the Bible college. Since that first trip, he has taken over 70 trips to India. Three or four trips every year. The Lord also opened the door to start a Bible Institute in Lithuania. By God's grace, they support 45 pastors in India and one pastor in Myanmar. 
They have provided all these pastors with some very helpful tools that they would not be able to have otherwise, like two-wheelers to help them get around, laptops, thousands of Bibles, and other Bible teaching material. They were able to ship 20 ton of additional Bible helps. Pastor Monroe says that for the pastor and believers in India, the greatest prayer is for their safety. The main religion there is Hindu, and in 2008, Hindus killed around 100 Christians and burned down countless churches. Thousands of Christians have lost their homes. So even today, it's unsafe for some of them to return to their villages. To the Hindu culture, when someone accepts Christ and is baptized, they are disowned from their families. They lose their jobs and they're cut off from society. So you can see they need so much prayer. Pastor Monroe is now over 80 years old, but he says he feels like he's 40 years old. He thinks it's the Lord who has given him his health and stamina even during these long trips. And maybe he thinks Mrs. Monroe's muffins and exercise plan help him too. The Monroe family is a great believer in the power of a gospel tract. Because of that first tract their daughter read that led her to accept Christ, the whole Monroe family accepted Christ. And because of Pastor Man Monroe's ministry, hundreds of people around the world have been saved. So be thinking now of who you can share a tract with. People all over the world may get saved if you give out one tract. <laughs> Sorry, just gonna get that, get, out, get that out. We're batting a thousand today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what a lesson on the missionary's life and uh, the Monroes. Incredible. Uh, not only was Mr. Monroe uh, doing a really neat job there working as an air traffic controller, but also they got saved because one tract was found, one person got saved, and the rest of the family got saved, and then they became missionaries later on, and they're still missionaries today. Uh, we'll probably have them come visit our church this year. So we're looking forward to that. And when you see them, you can go up to them and say, I learned all about you in children's church, okay? So make sure you remember that. Well, boys and girls, uh, I want to sing our Days of Creation song because that's what our lesson is going to be about today. Let me go grab the posters here. You guys remember the Days of Creation song? Let's see if you remember it. You can stay seated while we sing. And then we'll have our Bible lesson, okay? Let's sing. On the first day of creation, God made the day and night. On the second day, the atmosphere, God spread in his great might. On the third day of creation, land, sea, and plants God made. Sun and moon and stars were on day four. God's glory on display. On the fifth day of creation, God made the fish that swim, and the birds God made to fly above, and always sing for Him. On the sixth day of creation, land creatures big and small, and before His day of rest God formed, the man to rule them all. Amen. Great song, great singing, boys and girls. And uh, that is what our lesson is about today. The days of creation. Where did everything come from? You know, the Bible really begins right there. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. You know what the Bible says? It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
in the beginning, God created everything. There wasn't a big explosion that sent everything out to spinning into outer space, and then all of a sudden, boop, 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 people popped out of nowhere. No, instead, God designed all things that exist. God made everything that exists. And actually, the Bible in the New Testament says that by him, all things consist. That is, not only did he make everything, but he holds it all together as well. God holds it all together. Well, our lesson today is about the days of creation, Genesis chapter 1. And so I'm going to share the story here in uh, sort of like a rhyme. But uh, you guys you guys will know some of this just from our song but hopefully you'll learn a little more as we go through this lesson, okay? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here's a picture, and, and I want you to know, of course, all of our lessons, the pictures are um, drawings that other people have made. It's not a picture of the actual people and the actual events. We don't know especially, or exactly what they all look like, but here's some ideas, okay? All right, let's look at our story here. When the whole world began, God had a plan to create the heavens and the earth and make a home for man. So God began to speak. Let there be light. Darkness disappeared and all became bright. When everything separated as it should, God smiled and said, it is good. You remember what happens on day two? God saw water everywhere. He told the water where it needed to be. He sent some to the sky to become clouds, and he kept some on the earth to become the sea. When the water separated as it should, God smiled and said, It is good. Now the whole earth was covered with water. God told the water to move back and Land appeared with trees and plants of many colors, with vegetables, fruits, and nuts to crack. When everything separated as it should, God smiled and said, it is good. God made lights to rule the sky. During the day, the sun would shine bright. At night, the stars would sparkle in the sky, and the moon would rule the darkness and give the land light. When everything shone where it should, again, God smiled and said, it is good. Day five, the seas were empty and needed life. So God made fish to swim in the water everywhere. The skies were empty too and needed life. So God made the birds to swoop and fly throughout the air. When everything lived where it should, God smiled and said, it is good. After God created those things, the Bible says the evening and the morning was the fifth day. Now on the sixth day, then God filled the land with all kinds of animals. They were all different sizes and shapes and definitions. Look over here, an elephant, giraffes. There's a lamb. Then God created the most important thing of all. God made man and woman and gave them dominion. When everything lived where they should, God smiled and said, it is good. So here's a picture of a slice of each day. Then God looked over all his creation, the light and the darkness, the sea or the waters separated, the land, the sea, and the beautiful plants, the stars in the sky, the great sun and the moon reflecting, the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, all the creatures walking about and creeping on the land and man and woman. He admired the heavens, the land, and the seas. He sat down and rested because everything was as it should be. And then God smiled and said, it is good. The way God created the world to be, it was a beautiful and a good place. And 
in future lessons, perhaps when we're all back together, we'll talk about what happened after creation. Some of you already know, but what a beautiful world God created. And actually, we still, if you walk out in the park today, you'll see birds flying through the air still. You'll see fish swimming through the creek. Maybe you'll see deer walking across the creek. All these creatures that God created go out and find a garden. And you see the beautiful flowers at night or in the daytime. You can look up and see the clouds or the bright lights in the sky. God made them all, and he made them just the way they should be. And God made you, and God made me, and he made us to serve him. Lots of people talk about theories of how we all came to be. Where did we all come from? The Bible gives us a very simple and reasonable answer, and that is that God created the heaven and the earth. And in just six days, God created all the creatures and all the land and sea and the beginning of the human race. Our first father and mother is Adam and Eve. That's where we all come from. We all come from one family. Now, of course, we're all spread out now, but... Uh, there's only one human race. Adam and Eve were the first people to ever live. God made them that way, and we're all descendants from the same two people. Amazing, isn't it? But God's Word gives us these answers, and that's why we study God's Word. Well, boys and girls, thanks so much for joining us today for Children's Church. Uh, hopefully you understand how we all got here. The, uh, the days of creation are there in Genesis chapter 1, and you can read them together. Hey, don't forget your project today. To make a flag, can you paint or draw color? Maybe use some markers or crayons. Uh, or maybe be creative and you can use pieces of paper or other collections that you have to make the red and white stripes, the field of blue, and the 50 stars. Can you count all 50? Squeeze all 50 into the rectangle? Let's see if you can do it, okay? And if you do, send me a picture. I'd love to see it, okay? And uh, remember to celebrate Flag Day today. Make that picture and put it up on your wall, at your window. Maybe if you have some flags, put them outside, okay? And uh, I think that'll be a great way to remind people of the unity that we have in our nation around freedom and justice for all. All right? Well, that's it, boys and girls. Why don't we close? I mentioned the Star Spangled Banner. Should we do it? Do you guys know it? If you know it, some of you older kids, you know it. And the younger kids, you can learn it too. I, I really believe you can. And uh, so we're going to... Turn our attention to the flag here, and uh, let's sing it, the Star Spangled Banner, okay? Closer can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, they proved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wear? Thank you, boys and girls, for joining us. You are dismissed. <laughs>